Coming up next, another great story from an interview that I did with one of rock's greatest storytellers. This 70s rock classic came uh, when this band was on tour with the Doobie Brothers. I guess uh, the band was on the road, they were on their way to a gig, when during a traffic jam, a truck driver boxed them in, um, their tour bus. A little while later, this rock legend confronted the trucker at a rest stop. A brawl was about to go down. From this incident, though, the trucker said something that would inspire a rock classic. Get the story straight from the legend, coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you want the straight stories behind rock and pop's legendary hits, straight from the legends themselves, make sure that you subscribe below right now. Click the bell so you always know when our new ones are dropping. Also, you know, check out our, our exclusive content on Patreon. I know I talk about it a lot, but this helps the channel uh, continue to be a daily channel. We put new content up there. It really helps us out. Appreciate it. I'm excited to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations. This is where featured artists go really deep on their greatest songs and albums. A lot of stories you won't find anywhere else. This one is hilarious. So far on this channel, we've heard several great stories from Randy Bachman. For my money, Randy is one of the best song tellers in the whole game. Over the last few months, he's regaled us with quite a few tells. He shared the story of how he turned an impersonation of his younger brother Stutter into a number one rock classic with You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. Then he shared how a pizza guy played piano on a song that he never intended to release with Taking Care of Business. ended up becoming Elvis's mantra. The whole reason that Randy got into rock and roll in the first place was because of Elvis. It's really cool how that came full circle. Then the story of riding these eyes with Burton Cummings when they were part of the Guess Who. Uh, that one came while he was waiting for his date to get ready. She was upstairs. He was waiting for a long time. So he just pulled up to her piano and wrote it right there. These eyes are crying. Today, an equally entertaining story that came when he was touring with the Doobie Brothers. This is when he was uh, the instigator of the rock group Bachman Turner Overdrive, or BTO. And this one came from a bout of road rage, actually. It's when he confronted a reckless trucker. He was looking for a fight, but instead he got a 70s rock classic. He's going to tell you the story coming up next. Also, the song was something that he was strumming at the time. And then he said the Doobies were working on a song at the same time. Turns out both bands used similar chords. They have no idea who came up with them first. Both songs became huge classics. Find out more about that next as well. Now, as we get into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Clear. You know, my health has been upgraded over the last few months since I started using Clear consistently, especially washing my nose with Clear Nasal Care and brushing with Sprite toothpaste day and night. You know, most visits to primary care doctors were caused by sickness in the nose and mouth. That's why I wash my nose with clear sinus care and brush with Sprite every morning and night, and I chew Sprite gum during the day. All their products contain xylitol, the natural sugar that blocks bacteria and viruses. Clear is the solution. Click on the link below, leave us a comment on Amazon to let us know about your experience. Start brushing with Sprite and washing your nose with clear today. Here's Randy. Guess Who fans were really confused and uh, traumatized by your decision to leave the Guess Who. I remember my dad telling me when you had left the Guess Who, how he felt, how frustrated he was. And, uh, you know, especially because the band was on fire. It's been well documented why you left. But that must have been some heavy contemplation at that moment in your life and what you wanted to do about your decision. There was that involved, but I had no choice because I had a gallbladder issue. And every every night on the road for two solid weeks at two or three in the morning this thing would start up inside of me i didn't know what it was and it literally would have blood pouring out of me both ends in excruciating pain and not knowing what it is like am i dying is this what it is to die i mean literally and i would go into the hospital and they'd say you got to stay in overnight we'll give you tests 
I'm saying, I can't stay in overnight. I'm playing a gig tomorrow. I got to get up and drive to Cleveland. I got to drive to Pittsburgh. I got to drive to Toledo. On, 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 and on, and on. And and having this attack every single night. So when we did have some time off, we had like five or six days. I flew back to Winnipeg. I had a test. Found I had a, I had 20 gallstones. Had to have them out. Was put on a special diet. Your operation will be in August. This is somewhere back in May. They put on elective surgery, so I'm not emergency because your emergency for having an attack. But when they give you, you got to eat sugarless Jello, skim milk, and saltine crackers for three months. I said I'm going to go back and play the Fillmore. It was my last gig with the Guess Who, playing the Fillmore, which I had to play Fillmore East, right in New York. Right. So I go there and play it, and we don't want to play these eyes. It's a bubblegum top 40 ballad. We're on there. We're doing friends of mine. The condemned man was met by a giant cloaked figure. You know, we're doing like incredible, cool songs. Burton's doing poetry. I'm playing guitar. He's playing jazz flute. We're doing everything. And we keep getting encore after encore after encore at the Fillmore. And it's like now two in the morning. And we go out and Burton says, we literally have nothing else left to play. And one of the hippies yells out, play these eyes. And Burton goes, what? And I said, well, let, we have nothing else. We play it. And the whole film are all these hip people stoned on whatever, Coca-Cola or whatever they're going stoned on, are singing these eyes and hugging each other. It's their high school graduation song. Do you know what I mean? It was like amazing. And so we did these eyes there and found a, this is a really well-respected, respectable song. It really right. is a classic song. It wasn't yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was really a good song with good chords and had a lot of meaning to a lot of people and gets to play that a lot of weddings and reunions and, re and, uh, and uh, high school reunions and stuff like that. It's a high school graduation song. It's the wedding song. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never going to see another one like I have. What was your career plan at that point? Are you kidding? You don't have a plan. You're going to the hospital. Your plan is to get out of the hospital. I get out of the hospital. The band has gone on, on without me, rightly so, because when I was there, we were making seven fifty a night. Still, with all those hits, when these when the laughing when uh, American Woman hit, bam, ten and twelve thousand a night. The band is fifty grand in the hole. They get a couple of guitar, but I was straight arrow. I didn't drink, smoke, or do drugs. They were doing everything everyone else was doing. It was party time. They got a couple of guys and went on without me. And I stayed at home and did nothing for a couple of years and started another band because I was going crazy at night. And uh, the band evolved to being back with Turn Overdrive and sold more records in less time than the Guess Who ever sold in my whole time I was with them. And hit number one again, album and single, I think 74 with You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet and Not Fragile and sold like another 20 million albums. Here's something that you're never gonna forget. B -b -b -baby, you just... And you became the only Canadian at that point who had a number one hit with two different bands. Yeah. Done only by Paul McCartney with Wings and the Beatles. Yep. Two different bands, two number one album and single. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the BTO hits. Let It Ride, collab between you and Fred Turner. The title of the song was triggered after the band was involved in a traffic accident while on tour supporting Doobie Brothers. Right. Tell me about that, how that song came about. We were driving along on the freeway. Our license plate said Friendly Manitoba. We're driving from Winnipeg down to New Orleans to play Mardi Gras. Uh, at the warehouse there, not to play Mardi Gras parade, but it's a whole week of going crazy down there in, in February. And I was boxed in on the road by three truckers, a big semi in front, a semi behind, a semi behind, and they're going like 50 miles an hour. And we're trying to get out of this box they had us in on the highway. Speed limit then was 75. You could push it to 78, not get a ticket. And we're speeding down to New Orleans. So when one of the truckers takes an exit to a truck stop, we need gas. I'm driving an American Motors car, an ambassador station wagon, full of the band and all of our gear. And 
Fred Turner and I are the big guys in BTO. We're going to have a word with the trucker who has kept us boxed in at 50 miles an hour. And we gave him the finger out the window. <laughs> they went to 35 miles an hour and we're trying to get to our gig. So we get out there and I go to the trucker and I say, man, you're driving so impolitely. You're driving carelessly. He's saying, we're just having playing a game with you. Friendly Manitoba. The license plate says friendly Manitoba. And he says, it's no big deal, buddy. Why don't you just let it ride? And I say to Fred, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> he said, oh, it's a trucker thing for like, chill out, buddy. It's not, it's no big deal. And at the time I was playing around with Anton Dvorak's piano concerto in D. Because John Lennon said he'd listen to Stravinsky and all these other classical things to get inspired for the Beatles. And so I'm listening to classical music and I get nothing from this whole album of, of, of Anton Dvorak. Except at the end, Ballad and Plain D, that the little part that goes da 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 I lied, don't cry, would you let it ride? Great. And the next time we sing it, he sings over it like like in no time. We're going, good, he's going, and would you cry if I told you that I lied? And would you sing it? And we're still singing, let it ride. It becomes that response and call thing in this song that everybody loves. With this beautiful chord, the Anton Dvorak chording, where I start to play the chords, and then, boom, in comes the heavy part, chunk, 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 the real heavy part. Turner's vocal was incredible. He put his whole body oh. into that performance, man. Yeah. You hear the long version of that on the album. When he's screaming, we go into a breakdown. It's like a Doobie Brothers thing or Allman Brothers. We go, try, 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 let it ride, do, 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 on the guitar, answering that stuff. And he's going, do that rah, and he's screaming his head off. I just did a radio show on the great screams in rock and roll. And that one of them is from Let It Ride, and the other one's from Won't Get Fooled Again, you know, Roger Daltrey. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a couple of great screams in rock and roll. And Fred Turner is in three of them. Well, number three in Canada, number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100, still a favorite on the classic rock radio. It's been in pop culture like crazy. Anchorman 2. Question still remains. Lovelace, Halloween, Invincible, My Name is Earl. Wonder Years, Supernatural, just, um, it, it's it's a song that keeps going. It's like I'm you. And a Las Vegas machine or a game in Las Vegas where you let it ride and you double your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, if you can write a, a song like that. It's yeah. Gonna- great last question for you looking back at your whole career uh your life both your personal life and your career in music what are you most grateful for at this moment i always like to ask that that question i'm grateful to be alive i had a really tough year two years with uh, health issues, with COVID, with the vaccine, with destroying my immune system, with getting COVID twice, whooping cough. And here I am coming to Utah to play. I get to see my daughter who lives in Logan, Utah, and we're having a late Thanksgiving, early Christmas with her and her five kids. Then from there, I go to Toronto and do a couple of Christmas shows where I'm giving back, doing Christmas show, taking care of Christmas in Toronto and in Calgary. And to have uh, being playing in a band with my son, Tal. 
uh, the Backman Backman. We've got my guitar, my Gretsch guitar story is out. Uh, it's going to be out as a Netflix uh, film next year, the rockumentary. I'll be getting the stolen guitar back after 47 years. And in the, in the COVID shutdown, doing an album with my son, Tal, that we co-wrote and co-played together. It's a fabulous Americana album. It's not like any B2 or Guess Who or Tal Backman or My Soul. It's something we did as father and son. We wrote and played and sang together. Um, we're going to have an incredible year next year. And I'm just, that's what I'm grateful for is my family. The rock and roll, the number one records don't mean nothing. When all boils down, all you got left is your family and friends and a couple of great memories. And to to share it with them and to be close to them. The one thing about COVID, it made families come a lot closer together. You can't That's leave right. the house. You can't eat out. You, guess what? We're cooking at home. Guess what? We're planting a garden, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we got to do stuff that I did as a kid. So it's really been fun. In case you didn't catch it, the two songs that sounded similar uh, that uh, BTO and the Doobies were working on were uh, Long Train Running by the Doobies and Let It Ride by BTO. They were working on these songs at the same time and there was just something in the air. I'll tell you, doing the recent Professor Rock Live with Randy it's so much fun. Just one of the greatest storytellers ever. Make sure that you leave us a comment about this song, about Randy Bachman, BTO, Let It Ride. Such a great riff, such a great vocal on the song. Um, the fact that Randy Bachman isn't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I know I've said it before, but it's, it's, a, it's ridiculous. They need to get their act together, as we know, on many accounts. Anyway, if you like this, we invite you to subscribe to be part of our community where we kind of complain about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a lot, amongst other things, and celebrate the classics. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Yeah.